First, let's make note of the start position. Feet are going to be hip width, elbows behind knees, delts higher than hips, eyes straight ahead, neutral spine, and braced. Arms are going to be long with the elbows out. The first pull is everything that happens from the drive off the floor up until you start to transition. So as long as you're pushing with the legs and staying over the bar, you're in first pull. The key is pushing your whole foot through the floor. The weight's gonna be in the middle of the foot. Arms are gonna stay long. Keep a good strong angle at the back and uh, pull that thing, man. The second pull includes the transition from the first pull into the power position and the extension. So you, you stopped driving so much of the legs, you're gonna go to what people, some call the double knee bend and then extend up. The extension is going to include, you know, obviously hips, knees, and there's going to be in, uh, plantar flexion as well. So that all depends on the person. All right, here we're just talking about the, the power position. So I want you to, to note that the bar is about mid-thigh. Boom. I want you to see that the knees are bent at four, six inches. Some are a little bit more, some a little less. Key is this. See the feet are still flat. And shoulders on top of the bar. That is going to lead to a great extension up and a really nice bar path. Now let's talk third pull and the keys. The key is this. The third pull is obviously the pull under, but what's important is the transition from the second. I used to spend very little time. You know, when he's in extension, he's got his hips, knees, and uh, ankles are plantar flexed, but you can say extended, whatever. He's extended up on his toes. And he spends very little time up there. And now he's actively ripping right until he meets the bar in a very strong position underneath. Remember, this is 180 kilos, basically 400 pounds for a 16-year-old. And the keys, once again, are going to be the rhythm and the, the rhythm at the top and the timing meaning the lack of spending too much time, and then continuing to rip all the way till you meet the bar. Morgan does a good job of keeping his hook grip, so that means he can continue pulling for a lot longer. He can pull under the bar right until he meets it. If you have to let go of the hook grip, eventually there's going to be a time and space where you're not pulling because you had to let go. All right, guys, we're going to make a few points here um, with Morgan's clean you see that his feet are starting at about hip width his uh his elbows are either equal or they're slightly behind his knees his eyes are straight ahead um he's starting with his hips are above his knees and when he starts the pull his arms are going to stay long and his elbows are going to stay out and we'll watch the beginning arms are long I love his back angle. His shoulders stay well above his hips. His uh, shoulders stay over the bar. Um, the You're going to notice that center mass is going to be, that's why I drew the long blue line. It's going to be shoulders, then it's going to be arms, bar, and then middle of the foot. You know, I just like to tell my athletes to push the entire foot through the floor, and that way the center mass is going to be where it's going to be. You know, when you start telling them, you know, heels or even balls of the foot. A lot of times that can put them, you know, emphasizing too much one way and you can cause some imbalances. So just pushing your feet through the floor, just like if you were going to vertical leap, you wouldn't be thinking, I'll be on my heels or I'll be on my toes. You're just going to jump. He's going to push. I love how he stays over the bar. This is, uh, most people would say that, that is position two, but the way we teach it is position two is as long as he can stay over the bar and push with his legs and that's about it so he you know the bar now is well above his knees almost mid thigh and he's still driving with his legs he's still staying over the bar and now he's going to make his transition from you know, the first pull into the second pull a lot of people call this the double knee bend 
into that power position, which is perfect. You know, that's why I chose Morgan. Like, um, a lot of my athletes are going to lift really well, but he just happens to be super good at the cleans. You see how his feet continue to stay flat, driving through the floor, arms stay long. Now his shoulders are on top of the bar. Now all of his force is going to be driven up. It's, he's not going to have any wasted motion. He's going to extend, and that's it. Now this is what people call triple extension. Uh, his hips, his knees, and his ankles are extended. Um, some people get crazy with this whole, um, you know, the plantar flexion. You know, we, we call it triple extension. Be like, well, the ankles don't extend; they flex. But I think everyone understands what they're saying. So we just don't emphasize um, plantar flexion. I mean, I want my people to extend and extend violently. I just don't want any extra effort put through you know, pushing with the calves, you know, like, I don't think there's going to be that much extra by doing that. But what it could cause is delay, which is the most important part of the extension into the move under the bar or the rip under, which is what we defined as the third pull. We'll get into that. Here he is. Now, as he's pulling under, you see, you can see him actively pulling under his, his traps have started that motion. His arms are pulling and uh, his feet are jumping from hip width now to sh about shoulder width. And the way he did that is by lifting his knees. Uh, you'll see a lot of people doing the donkey kick, and that can cause you to end up on your toes. But he's going lift to his, lift his knees, move them out gracefully. And how much someone jumps out? Well, as long as they have a good, solid base, um, it's not going to be something where I'm going to be, you know, dogmatic on. It has to be shoulder width or a little bit uh, more than shoulder width. Some people don't move them hardly at all, which you'll see in a few minutes. And so, and the key now is meeting the bar in a very strong position. A lot of people just kind of fall under it and just catch it, and they get bombed in the bottom. You notice, Morgan, this is 180 kilos. He's a, you know, he's a 16-year-old lifter, about 94 kilos, 95 kilos, which is like, 207, 209, meets the bar, and he's going to stand up. Uh, just drew that little extra line just to show you the difference in he started hip width, moved to shoulder width. I don't emphasize it. Some people teach, you know, you get dogmatic on the feet have to move. Some people get dogmatic on they should move. Um, I'm just going to go with, you know, as long as they're in a stable position when they catch it, I'm okay with it. He's going to stand up nice and strong. There you go.